Oh yeah, there you go. It's like so. Good morning, Kenny Dragons. Today is Tuesday. It's March 22nd, 2022. It's the 136th day of school. Uh, I'm Mr. Butcher, and it's my job to keep you guys safe so you can show us how excellent you can be. Hopefully, if you left your average at home or on the bus, and you are ready. Ready means being in the right place, at the right time, with the right stuff. To have a respectful. Respectful means treating others the way you want to be treated. And responsible day. Responsible is doing your job with a smile on your face and giving perfect effort. Speaking of responsibilities, our very first responsibility that we have each and every day is to be ready to show respect for the rights that we have at this country, in this country and at this school. We do this by daily saying the Pledge of Allegiance, doing our school pledge, and our moment of silence. To show respect, we stop what we're doing, stand up tall, put our hand over our hearts like this. We say the pledge loudly, clearly, and with pride. If you would please stand for the pledge and remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge myself as a Kennedy Dragon to be ready for the day ahead of me. I'll be respectful of myself my teachers, and all others I meet throughout the day. I promise to be responsible for myself, my actions, and my learning. I'll work my hardest to be the best dragon I can be. Let's take this moment to reflect quietly on our day, our activities, and what we hope to accomplish. All right, the next responsibility that we have each day is to try to keep each other safe by slowing down the spread of germs. We do this by frequently washing our hands. When we wash our hands, we want to use soap and water. If we do not have access to a sink, alcohol-based hand sanitizer will be sufficient. When we wash our hands, we want to get all parts of our hands, the palms of our hands, the backs of our hands, our fingertips, in between our fingers, our wrists, and our thumbs. When we wash our hands, we want to do it for at least 20 seconds. Let's model what good hand washing looks like now. Do the palms of your hands. Get the back of your hand. Get the back of your other hand. Get in between your fingers. Get your fingertips. Get your other set of fingers. Get your thumb. Get your other thumb. Get your wrist. Get your wrist. And now your hands should be nice and clean. Alright, now that we've washed our hands, we've done our moment of silence, we have done our pledges, it's time to get going with the uh, day. No birthdays today, so let's go straight to making our lunch choice. For lunch today, we have chicken fajita nachos, lettuce and tomato, pinto beans, and fresh fruit. If you do not want chicken fajita nachos, there's always PB&J or yogurt and muffin. Make your lunch choice. Alright, our morning message is on respect. Doing what's right and integrity. Listen up. How many of you can relate to this story? There once was a young man who wanted to own a very special racing bike. For months he worked hard, saved his money, and finally bought his bike. That's the good news. The bad news is someone stole it. Some of you have had experience like this. You've probably felt very angry, hurt, and frustrated. This story is sad for two reasons. It's sad because the boy who owned the bike lost his bike. And it's sad because the person who stole the bike lost something too. They lost their self-respect. If you've taken something that doesn't belong to you, think about these words from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The time is always ripe to do the right thing. Remember, it's never too late to get back some self-respect. Talk to an adult whom you trust 
and together you can find a way to do what's right. With something to think about on Mr. Butcher, make today your masterpiece or not. Remember the choice yours. And that's so true. Sometimes we have people like they'll just they see something on the ground, they like it, and they take it and they think it's there. They just claim it's theirs. They know it's not theirs, but they take it. And that is stealing. And you lose a little bit of your self-respect when you take things from other people. So think about that before you do it and always do the right thing. That is all we have for announcements, so please help me. Me and your teachers keep you safe. That is our job. And your job is to help us keep you safe. And you can help us by being a ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focused on graduating in the year. Because when you are a ready, respectful, and responsible student focused on graduation, you, you are, are boldly committed to student, student success. success. I love you very much. Have a great day. We're continuing with our March Madness with books. Today we have two more new teachers sharing their book. We have Miss Fortson with Don't Touch My Hair and Miss Hall with The Most Magnificent Thing. Here is Miss Fortson with don't touch my hair. Hi everyone. The book I'll be reading to you today is called Don't Touch My Hair by Cherie Miller. We have the character running away from all the hands. I'm Aria and this is my hair. I love my hair. It's soft and bouncy and grows up towards the sun like a flower. I love it up or down, styled or wild. I don't care. I just want it to be free. Actually, everyone loves my hair too. When I walk down the street, I hear so many compliments. It's so big. How do you get it so fluffy? I wish I had hair like that. It's great that people love my hair, but some love it so much they want to touch it. I don't like this. What does it feel like? They are so curious about my hair that they try to touch it without even asking for permission. Oh, I want to feel it. Me too. I get very good at avoiding hands. I have to start looking for ways to hide my hair. I try blending in with the scenery, but I'm quickly spotted. Over here! I try hiding underwater, but that doesn't last long. Oh wow, I love your hair. Can I touch it? I escape to the jungle, but the critters just can't keep their hands to themselves. Let me touch it. No, me. Me first. Even in the tallest castle tower, someone is always there, ready and waiting to touch my hair. Girl, your hair is fierce. No matter how far I go, it doesn't seem to matter. How did you get it so big? Finally, I found a place where no one wants to touch my hair, but after a few hours, I get lonely. I decided to go home. I try my best to ignore the attention, but as a hand sinks into my hair, wow, it looks so soft. Oh, it is soft. I decide I can't take it anymore. That's it. That's enough. Don't touch my hair.
there. This is my hair. It's great that you love it. I love it too. But please, just look and don't touch without my permission. The next time someone wants to touch my hair, they ask, can I touch your hair? I reply, not today. Okay. The other girl said. Now it feels great to walk down the street without anyone trying to touch my hair. My curls are free to reach for the sun just like a flower. Some people still ask to touch my hair, but if I say no, they listen. How are you today? Hello. But if you ask nicely, sometimes I say yes. The end. Thanks for listening, guys. Great job, Miss Fortune. And now it's for time for Miss Hall with the most magnificent thing. Good morning, Kennedy Dragons. This is Miss Hall. And this morning I'm going to read this book to you. It's called The Most Magnificent Thing, and it's written by Ashley Spires. is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side. Her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. That's happened to me before, but I've had to try something again and again just to get it right. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square, she makes it round, she gives it legs, she adds antenna, she makes it fuzzy, she makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese, but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. She gets mad.
The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch. Oh, no. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. Oh, I hate that she's quitting. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notice some, notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio on the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. And he's saying, this is the perfect thing to ward off bears. And she's looking at one of her designs saying, this will stop that leak. This one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little to the left and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. And she created a seat for her assistant, her dog, to ride in as she is going on her scooter. I think that is so cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this book. Have a great day. All right, once again, two more great books read by two wonderful teachers. It's your turn to vote.